Hello and welcome. I'm Virginia Wood, and on behalf of the New England Sports Turf Managers Association, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. This webinar is brought to you with support from our wonderful sponsors, Hearts Turf Pro, Reed Custom Soils, Specialized Turf Services, and Sports CE. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers. George Mullen is the founder and owner of CIS Group, a manufacturing and sports construction company with offices in Europe, Asia, and Africa. George and the CIS Group have constructed pitches for some of the greatest sports teams around the globe. Their client list includes world-renowned soccer teams such as Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Manchester United. In 2018, CIS completed six stadium pitches in Russia for the World Cup. In fact, in 2018 and 19, every major global football and rugby tournament was played on a CIS pitch. In the US, CIS grass has been installed at Lambeau Field as well as Green Bay's Training Center and the San Jose Earthquakes. Joining George today is Robert Heggie. Robert is Director of Grounds at BMO Field, home of the Toronto FC and Toronto Argonauts. With more than 20 years of experience in the turf industry, he has introduced many new technologies in Canada, including artificial lighting, undersoil heating, and hybrid grass. He'll share his real life experience of installing and maintaining hybrid grass stitching at his facilities. Please join me in welcoming George and Robert. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> thank you for taking this time uh, to come and watch this webinar. I'd also like to thank Robert uh, for coming on board because he's actually a practitioner who does it every day of the week on pitches. Um, as, uh, my name is George Mullen and I'd, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about hybrid turf. It's uh, become increasingly popular, certainly in Europe and Asia, and to a lesser degree in the North American market. And what we'd like to try and do today is share our experience of hybrid turf, uh, give you some of the advantages, but also some of the disadvantages of hybrid turf and where it is applicable. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a great system, but it's not suitable for everywhere. So I just want to tell you, first of all, uh, a little bit about CIS pitches. Um, we're interesting in that we probably have a foot in both camps. We uh, have an artificial grass factory in the United Kingdom, but 50% of our business is natural grass. So I like to think that gives us a pretty good overview of artificial turf surfaces, natural grass, and lately hybrid surfaces. Um, I think something that's we feel very important as we maintain stadium pitches and training grounds all over the world. Uh, over 2 million yards of grass we maintain from stadiums like Galatasaray in Turkey to the Middle East, where we handle most of the Premier League clubs in the Middle East training pitches. So we're, we're looking at grass every day. We're encountering the same problems that <clears throat> most of you will encounter every day. Uh, and that's just makes us learn and, and understand that grass is a wonderful product, but can kick you in the backside whenever uh, it wants. And it needs constant care and attention. Um, cis grass is a product, uh, it's a hybrid grass uh, product where we're stitching polyethylene fibers uh, into natural grass profile. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit later on about the stitching. There's essentially two systems, one is carpet uh, and one is stitching. Um, we uh, launched about six years ago. Prior to that, there was only one company on the market in the world. Uh, that was uh, Desert Grassmaster, a very good product, very successful product, um, but uh, had no competition. And uh, we as a company uh, saw the benefits, particularly of the stitch system. And we felt uh, we wanted to, to get into that market. And so we developed and patented our own product. So we operate around the world, as I say, 50% natural, 50% artificial, but certainly the hybrid side of the market is growing faster. And that's the general impression you see around the world. A little bit of uh, marketing on our side, or hopefully <clears throat> to give you some credit, some idea of our credibility. Uh, in 2018, we constructed six of the 12 World Cup stadiums for, in Russia. Uh, that's full construction. So that's actually design, building the pitch, uh, putting our aeration, cis air system in, our undersoil heating systems, and our hybrid. 
and the World Cup final stadium Luzhninki, uh, we we installed our hybrid system on that pitch. And one of the real benefits of hybrid is the amount of hours you can play on a, on a, on a natural grass pitch because a stitch system is 95% grass, it's 5% fiber. So you get the stability. But <clears throat> when we did the World Cup final, we had an agreement and understanding that we would use that pitch for 45 hours in four weeks. We actually used it for 85 hours. And without the hybrid, that World Cup final pitch would not have survived the intense activity of four weeks of a World Cup. And I realize that's right at one end of the, of the screen and, and, and there's gonna be people here involved in you know, pitches like my local club in the West of Ireland, where we've just got one small pitch. But, but hybrid has a real benefit in extending the playing hours of the surface. But that, again, just to show you that uh, hopefully we know a little bit about what we're talking about. Uh, I like to think we've made pretty much most of the mistakes on grass pitches. Um, managed to fix most of them. Well, we don't have all the answers, but certainly uh, I've made most of the mistakes. Now, I'd like to introduce uh, <clears throat> a good friend of mine, uh, Robert Heggie. Robert, I think many of you will know, uh, is the director of grounds um, up at Toronto. And he's fairly unique in that he's got a range of sports being played on his stadium. Uh, and, and, and his field takes quite a bit of punishment, but it's over a variety of sports. And what we really wanted Robert here was to, to give you somebody right at the coalface who's experiencing the problems every single day. We, uh, we stitched his pitch uh, just over two years ago. And um, Robert, can I ask you to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, thank you everyone for having me and uh, wanting to listen about my, my history and my background. Um, went to the University of Guelph for horticulture and turf grass management while working through the turf industry since I was about 16 years old. Um, have done everything from golf courses in Barbados that are Zoiza and Paspalum and Bermuda grass to cricket pitches down there to polo fields, uh, horse polo fields, and then coming back up here, uh, cool season grasses, uh, and from golf to stadium sports. Um, been with Toronto FC for 12 years. Uh, we've built it from a pretty modest club, a 20,000 person stadium to a 35,000 person stadium, uh, originally artificial turf, uh, and that's where I came in. Um, came a natural grass pitch, team started getting better. Uh, I was always very reluctant with the hybrid system just because the inability to, to, to resod in, in bad situations. And that's where George was saying it's not for everybody. Um, but after growing the stadium into with grow lights and heating systems and grow covers and these types of tools to help aid the, the hybrid system, uh, about two years ago, I finally entered the hybrid world. Uh, as the team got better, my season went from being an April to November season to basically uh, February through December in Toronto. Um, we had a lot of early starts. The field would not hold together, even with the lights, with the heat, with everything else. I had the ability to make the grass green, but there was basically no structure there, no deep root growth in, in February as, as a turf manager could understand. Um, finally got tired of being uh, accosted for not having a turf, good, good, quality, uh, good quality turf in February and March. And uh, I, sided with with going with uh with cisgrass and that was after much research between cisgrass and dasso uh, i found personally that they're it's a superior product um that kind of just brings us to today uh i very good news i was talking to some important people at fifa and after everything that i've done to this field they gave us a 10 out of 10 and a big part of that 10 out of 10 is the the cis air uh, aspect of it and the uh, cis grass aspect of it. So, um, yeah, that's about it for me. Hey, thanks, Robert. <clears throat> Robert, as we go through the webinar, um, obviously, I'd like you to come in at any time. If I say something that is controversial, you don't agree with, please just butt in. And, and you know, I like this to be a discussion rather than just sitting here going through a PowerPoint presentation. Um, but 
you know, we really want to try and explain a little bit about hybrid turf. Um, towards the end of this webinar, Robert is going to really focus on the whole maintenance area because that's incredibly important. Uh, at the end of the day, a hybrid pitch, if it's a stitch pitch, is still 95% natural grass. And that's, I can't stress that enough. Uh, it's really important. It's not some magical fix out there. Um, this, th this slide uh, refers to uh, the University of Tennessee. One of the points that we realized very early in coming into the market was we needed some data uh, from North America. And so we, uh, we, we worked with John Sorokin at uh, the University of Tennessee and we, we ran a series of trials really to try and replicate the growing conditions in North America warm season grass, cool season grass, so that we could actually provide data <clears throat> for your climate. Um, that, that research is, is available, it has been completed. And really what it shows is, yes, there's a, there's a significant benefit of the hybrid on the cool season. On the warm season, as you can probably understand, the benefit is, uh, is more minimal. And that's purely because uh, of the strength of, of Bermuda grasses. There is a benefit, but it's certainly a much greater benefit on a cool season uh, grass. But that research, as I say, is available. <clears throat> We're happy to, uh, to share it and discuss uh, with anybody who's are any questions on it. And John Sorokin is more than happy to, uh, to answer questions on it. So the key point here is, look, we've, we've, we've done research in Europe, but we've actually gone out and, and done it in, the nor in North America. So let's... <clears throat> Let's talk about hybrid. Okay, there's there's really two types. Okay, uh, essentially you've got the stitch system, which is Sysgrass or Tesso Grass Master, and you've also got a myriad of carpet systems, and we'll go through them. But carpet systems uh, have been around a long time. We used a product called Extra Grass, which came from green fields in Europe, probably 14, 15 years ago in stadiums. Uh, since then, there are probably 18, 20 carpet systems uh, on the go. And I'll talk about the pros and cons of, of each of them. We have a carpet system. We have our stitched patented system. My own preference is, is stitchy, but it, it very much depends on your locality, your requirements and your demands. But essentially, two types of hybrid, one carpet, very similar to an artificial carpet that we infill and a stitch system. <clears throat> Just to try and, I suppose, get across some fairly simple numbers on uh, these hybrid systems. So I'm repeating myself, the stitch system is 95% grass, 5% artificial fiber, okay? The fibers are stitched down to a depth of about seven inches and there's about one inch above the ground and they're stitched roughly about a quarter of an inch apart. We have a second product where we stitch at 3.5 inches. We call that Sysgrass Light. And we will be bringing a new patented machine on the market in the middle of this summer, <clears throat> which will, in addition to being 100% electric, will also uh, be able to stitch at varying depths. So the stitch system, going down about seven inches um, into a sand profile, okay? Stitch systems do not like rocks and they don't like stones. And that is one of the downsides of stitching. The needles tend to bounce and break and it's not much fun. If you look at the carpet system, a little bit more uh, artificial fiber, anywhere from eight to 10% of the carpet can be made up uh, of artificial fibers. Again, polyethylene fibers, those of you who are used to artificial turf will be very familiar with polyethylene fibers. They're the standard <coughs> fiber that's used in artificial turf. The carpet system can be grown in sod and, and is done so reasonably, uh, well, sorry, it, it's done to a reasonable degree in, in Europe where we tend to have maybe more multifunctional stadiums where we're putting on a lot of events at the last minute. Um, 
the, the, the carpet system can be installed in rolls that are usually uh, one point, I'm converting to yards, about 1.4 yards wide, I think, um, and about uh, two, two inches uh, thick. Um, that's where we tend to see the carpet systems used. Again, our experience with them is they usually pretty good year one, year two. They seem to struggle year three onwards. That's just my own experience. Okay, so stitched in carpet. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about pitch construction. And I'm not trying to uh, to go too heavy here, but if you can see the cylinder that's uh, on the screen. Our, our construction in Europe uh, is fairly standard. We have a gravel layer, and then we have a sand layer, and then we have a root zone layer. And, and the root zone layer for me is what really matters in any pitch construction because that's where the root activity is going to happen. Um, and that, so <clears throat> our, our construction in terms of cis grass or the hybrid stitch, we would stitch all the way through that root zone layer right into the sand layer so seven inches down okay in the carpet system you would actually roll the carpet out on top of the root zone layer and then you would infill it with more root zone so quite quite different and they both have advantages and disadvantages in terms of construction but certainly with the stitch system you really need the root zone and the sand layer particularly the sand layer when we're stitching through. Just to show you what a machine looks like, um, this is a cisgrass machine. You can see lots of yarn. Uh, we have two sets of needles, one at the front, one at the back, and we're stitching uh, roughly one pitch in seven days. Uh, the new machines that will come out will be smaller than this. But this is your typical stitched machine. Um, fairly heavy machines. They're obviously on, on uh, wide, uh, wide tracks, but they are large machines. They're not something that uh, you, just, uh, you just rock up with. Okay, let's talk about, again, looking at the, <coughs> the stitch system, um, stitch into sand. I made the point about rocks doesn't like it. Um, we can stitch pretty much working 24 hours a day, hand it over to you in seven days and you can play football pretty much straight away. Um, and that's a real plus benefit. We did uh, a, a tournament for the, uh, the World Club Championships in Abu Dhabi, where we actually soldered the pitch and stitched at the same time. And they played within uh, 24 hours of the soldering and the stitching finishing. So quite, quite a flexible system. In terms of our technology, again, we, we will be able to, with the new technology, to stitch at varying depths. The polyethylene fiber is selective because it's fairly soft. You're not going to get abrasions. Um, and again, our, our machines will stitch uh, so, you know, seven days, and we're, we're certainly the fastest on the market today. Now. I'm going to shut up for a few minutes and I'm just going to play a video, which I hope that you can all hear and see. And this is just showing you. Okay. 
Thank you. I hope that gave you a, a quick overview of how we stitch pictures. Robert, I just want to <clears throat> have a chat with you here on particularly the, the pros and cons of, of a stitched hybrid carpet. Um, I've put some of my ideas up there in terms of what I think are the benefits and what I think are also some of the negatives. Um, for someone who's a practitioner, when you're making a decision on a hybrid carpet pitch, looking at these sort of pros and cons, what's driving your decision making? Uh, when it comes to insulation or maintenance? Let's go installation first. Maintenance we'll do later. Installation. Um, well, like I said, with, I was always hesitant to get the hybrid pitch um, because I did feel like I was being handcuffed because in the emergency situation, I wouldn't be able to resod. Um, knowing I have an early season, I have an aggressive uh, ownership. Uh, for you guys that don't know, soccer starts in about February here, it goes till December. Uh, American football, the Toronto Argonauts of the CFL play from June till December. So those two sports completely overlap. Uh, the Argos, Argos only started playing here four years ago. We got through year one. Uh, and then once we got into year two, I just started seeing the downsides of 100% natural turf when, uh, uh, when a stadium is so heavily overbooked. Um, so the pros, then putting the, the hybrid in, um, the hindsight of being worried about not being able to resod kind of goes away because in the last three years with a hybrid system, I haven't ever thought about ever seeing the turf thin enough that I would need to resod. Um, so the pros, the pros of it is now that I have it stitched uh, in February, in March, when the roots just don't want to drive themselves, you get that stability. Uh, it doesn't cut up as quickly. There's, there's lots of pros to it now that it is in. Uh, and I didn't realize what those pros would be before actually having it. I, I painted it with more cons than pros when I didn't have it. Now that I do have it, I paint it with more pros than cons, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. I mean, when we're when we're selling this system, we're talking about increased playing hours, stability to surface, uh, safety for players, um, and really, from a maintenance perspective, a lot less dividend. One of the one of the objections that we come up to come up with quite a lot, and in uh, I think particularly uh, in North America, is the fact that you know you re we're renovating these pitches every every year. Um, now, I know in some stadiums, some places, they've managed to go two years without renovation and certainly open training fields, they've managed to do that. What, what, what's, what's your view on that? Uh, again, that was part of my hesitation was the renovation process when my season's so long. It really, my renovations have to have happened midwinter. Um, and that's why I wasn't 100% comfortable with the hybrid system until I had the grow lights, until I had undersoil heating, until I had some tools to assist me with the hybrid. Um, I wasn't very, wasn't comfortable with it. To me, hybrid was the icing on the cake after having a bunch of other tools implemented first. Um, coming to the renovation, uh, it is hard in the North American market because uh, we play all spring and summer and fall, unlike the European market where they, I believe they play from, from early summer to, to winter. And then the groundskeepers have a more ideal growing, uh, growing conditions to regenerate the field. Um, but yeah. now like last year I got through one, one renovation as soon as the pandemic hit and all sports shut down. First thing I do is jump on my phrase mower and rip out my grass. So it's just finding those, those periods of time uh, to renovate. Yeah, I mean, what we advise people is if you can't renovate each year is to uh, literally phrase mow, scarify throughout the year. But uh, but certainly, and, and, and one of the cons, because a lot of the people on this webinar will not be perhaps in stadiums, may not have grow lights, uh, a lot of those ancillary items. But um, the, the, the real plus is you're still playing on grass, you're getting the benefit of the fibers. Um, and you're getting a very stable surface. So and to add to that, like the grow lights are really only assisting me early and later in the year. I think last two years ago, as soon as summer comes and I got natural sunlight, I pretty much parked my grow lights, parked my heating system and parked all other tools 
because uh, those are mainly spring and fall tools uh, and the cis grass holds its own almost through the summer. Okay, great. Thanks for that. We're just going to switch into the grass carpet and I <clears throat> just put together a couple of slides because I wasn't sure how familiar uh, the audience is with uh, the carpet systems. Um, it's those of you who are familiar with artificial grass, you can see you know, how, how it's rolled out. It comes in, in, in very large rolls. You roll it out and, and you infill it. And one of the tricks if you're doing it is you need to have a particularly dry root zone and it needs not to be raining when you're trying to fill these carpets in uh, because you otherwise you bury the fibers. But um, this is a product that we have. Uh, we developed it with an Italian company <clears throat> and it's uh, I think it's 100% it's recyclable, but essentially most of the carpet systems are very, very similar. Where you see a difference is on the backing. Uh, one of the key things you need to look for on a carpet backing is for wide spacing. Those roots have to get through this barrier. And that is one of the key, key questions if you're looking at a hybrid carpet system. Talked about a little bit about infilling. Um, I'm in this business a long time. Uh, the first time I did a, a carpet system, <clears throat> I foolishly uh, did it with too much sand in the infill, a little bit wet, wet, and I managed to spend about seven days on my hands and knees trying to get fibers back up again. So I can't stress enough that if you were to go with a hybrid carpet system, it is incredibly important that you choose the right uh, sands you do it when it's dry and you do lots of passes. You don't try and, you know, I'm busy this afternoon, I'll fly through it and lo and behold, you know, you're gonna find most of your fibers are uh, completely buried. And, and that, that, that these systems just don't work if you do that. Hybrid carpet, uh, as I said to you, it obviously can be grown in turf and that is a, certainly a benefit. You can bring it in in rolls. Um, one of the downsides, I suppose, uh, we tend to see with clients is when you start asking clients for deposits because you want to put uh, the carpet in a pitch uh, in a sod farm and it's going to take uh, 12, 14 months to grow. It's, it's quite a hefty investment. Um, but certainly it's become quite prevalent uh, in Europe. But <clears throat> my only comment on hybrid carpet systems is they in our experience, are not lasting as long as the manufacturers are claiming they're going to last. And that's my own personal observation, and it's based on practical experience. Very good for multifunctional short-term uh, stadiums. Again, without trying to repeat uh, the process, if you look at a carpet system very similar to artificial turf, you need to make sure the tough lock uh, is sufficient because if the fibers start to come out, the whole system falls apart. Uh, and that's really you know, one, of the, one of the key problems we originally saw with these carpet systems was the fibers were very, very loose. So tough lock, and again, you've got to have that open backing, really important to let the roots through. This is a, just an example of a carpet system, which is a the display system, which is in, in turf. You can see the roots coming through. This is on a ni nice open turf farm uh, in Italy with lots of sunlight and great rain. It's beautiful. A um, bit more difficult when you get into a stadium. So just bear in mind that these beautiful pictures are on a sod farm when everything is, is going well. Again, hybrid carpets. Robert, I'm not sure how familiar are you, or did you look at the hybrid carpet system when you were evaluating uh, the, the hybrid stadium? Yeah, yeah. I did. Um, at the time, like you're saying, there's a plethora of them out on the market. Um, I don't know if you had one when I stitched or when I was looking at the we stitching. Didn't. No, we didn't. Um, a lot of the ones that I looked at had a very solid backing to me. And a lot of the guys were like, oh, it decomposes in the ground and drainage will be fine and all that type of thing. And I just didn't buy it, basically. And then talking to some of the, the, old, the old, uh, older guys in the States that the carpet system did come through a couple of years ago. Um, and a lot of them had failures just because it wouldn't drain, it wouldn't grow, it wouldn't do a lot of things. Um, your product there that I just saw actually for the first time uh, looked like it was a lot more open on the back and it looked like roots and, and water could actually 
go through that. Um, the reason I, it's not a cheap system, the carpet system, when you compare it to the injected system, uh, like to me, I'm not a multi, I'm a multi-use in two sports, but I'm never, the plan is I'm never going to have to rip this out. I think the carpet system would shine where, you know, you're going to have concerts, you know, you're going to have things and you know, at some point you're going to want to rip it out in the next year or two. Um, I think personally, the return on investment in the stitch product uh, that's going to last you 10 years or, or whatever it is, depending on how you maintain it. Um, if you can make it work in your facility and the ownership group understands what they're buying into, I think it's, it's a, it's a superior product. Yeah, I, I, I look again, we have, we have a carpet product and we have a stitch product. I think the, the carpet product works well if you're looking for a very short term multifunctional stadium where you want to take, for example, where the stage is, you want to rip it out and put in a hybrid carpet, it can work well. You're absolutely right in terms of cost. Um, they're, they're, they're even probably at the moment, probably a little bit more expensive than the stitch systems. The, the biggest issue that I've always had with them, which is why when we talk to you, <laughs> I don't have a, a hybrid carpet system is we originally started out building natural grass pitches and then we went to carpet systems 14, 15 years ago. And the issues we had was we found the backing didn't biodegrade, even though we were told it was going to. Um, and we struggled to get the roots through the backing. Now, some of the new systems have very open backing and certainly the roots are coming through, but it's very much applicable to a specific in, uh, environment within a stadium. Uh, and my own view, again, we have both is uh, I'm more of a stitch person because I had to uh, sell again stitch systems for about 10 years and I could see they were they were doing very well. Again, and this is my own personal view, we're finding that once we get past three years on a carpet system, we're struggling. The benefit just seems to uh, to drop dramatically, whereas on a, on a hybrid stitch system, you're getting eight, 10 years comfortably. Um, and again, <clears throat> the hybrid carpet needs that uh, summer renovation, just in the same way as the stitch system did. So in terms of, of, of looking at uh, Building what, what what's different with a hybrid pitch versus a, a normal natural construction? Very little, very little at all. Um, if you're stitching, you obviously need that seven inches uh, profile to stitch into. But otherwise, this a natural pitch construction um, is pretty much identical to uh, to for hybrid carpet or hybrid stitched. Uh, as I said, if we're, we do stitch into existing pitches, and we, we've done that quite a bit, the downside with a stitch system on existing pitches is if there are a lot of uh, rocks or stones, uh, it, it, it doesn't work well. There's no point pretending it does. It doesn't. And so um, <clears throat> a company like us, if we were looking at stitching into one of your training fields and it was heavy with stones, I'd be saying, sorry, don't waste your money. Uh, go do something else. Go go hire a good groundsman. Uh, get some good maintenance equipment. It'll work just just fine. Uh, so that is one of the the definite downsides of the stitched uh, system. Going to talk a little bit about maintenance, and this Robert is where you are going to become the professional. I'm going to shut up because uh, you have the experience. I don't. We. I did say that we, we, we look after about 2 million yards uh, of turf every day. So uh, I read the reports, but I'm not eating, sleeping and breathing it. That's what you're doing. And really what um, I'd like to try um, and get you to, I think, get across to our audience is what are the, the sort of differences with uh, hybrid pitches? What do we got to look for? What are the mistakes? Uh, that we can make. And this slide is very simple. What happens if you don't manage it? And, I, and I'm going to come back, I think it's the fifth time I've said it, they're 95% grass, these pitches. They're not like an artificial pitch where you maybe sold the idea they're maintenance free, which they're not. I can certainly tell you a hybrid pitch is not in any way maintenance free. It needs maintenance just like a natural grass pitch. This, uh, we just put this up, Robert, for you to 
give you a few pointers uh, on what your thoughts are. What, what are the key differences versus three years ago and two years ago when you got your hybrid in terms of maintenance? Um, well, now my focus on maintenance, two big focuses once you go hybrid, I think, is organic matter control, which would be your thatch control. Um, and then I think the other one is compaction control because your traditional methods of aeration uh, do change. Um, so I think when it comes to that, uh, organic control, like you're saying, there's phrase mowing is kind of the end game when you've gone too far. Uh, but I think the more you can stay on top of it with your verticutting programs and your unirake programs and your pro stripe or, or pro sweep programs and things like that, the more, unfortunately, the team doesn't kill the grass quick enough anymore. And I have to go out and I have to remove half of it. Um, because it has so much reinforcement. And I don't want a thick, healthy, oh, I don't want thick grass because then that's just gonna decompose and that's gonna get into my profile. So I think the biggest change for, pro, for, for the maintenance was just more verticutting uh, and more, more cleaning of the, of the surface, let's say. Um, and I think the cleaner you keep it, uh, the more you, you can prolong your renovation processes, let's say. Um, so it's much the same as the, the maintenance programs was before, uh, granular feeding every two weeks or so because your sand-based field, uh, my soil application fertilizers, my foliar fertilizers, uh, my aerations, uh, all, that, all that fun stuff, uh, but with mostly a focus on our organic matter control. And examples last year when I did renovate during the pandemic, uh, I, I overseeded, I let the field come in um, and my grass was lacking nitrogen all year last year. Uh, my thought process was I don't have any play because my team's down in the States. Um, so why grow my plant any quicker than I need to grow my plant when I can slow it right down? Again, prolonging my renovation process. Um, so I'd say that's the, the big focus is controlling organic matter. Okay, one of the criticisms of hybrid pitches, which came historically was they get very firm. Uh, certainly, our impression when we when we started that was anecdotally what you heard. Pitch is very firm, uh, and a lot of it was <clears throat> drove the pitch construction to become much more sand orientated, ninety five percent fan sand, five percent organic. We've tended to take that back to sort of uh, a more uh, typical construction of eighty five percent sand, fifteen percent organic. Because I need organic to grow grass, uh, and that's key. So. Have you noticed, for example, on that firmness that you are aerating more frequently on a hybrid pitch versus a natural standard natural grass pitch? Uh, I don't think so. Um, luckily, my soccer club, they like it buzzed down at like 20 mil, uh, which is like three quarters of an inch. And they like it as hard as I could possibly make the field, basically. They like a fastball. Um, so I've actually never had complaints about the firmness of the field here. Uh, which is lucky. Um, and that being said, it could, the, the firmness would also be a reflection of canopy cover as well. So if you have more canopy cover because your grass is being reinforced, then that should alleviate some of the firmness. I think pre, when people didn't know how to maintain the hybrid as well and things start thinning out and you're relying on the hybrid uh, fibers, without the protection of the natural grass. I could see that being a firmer, sur firmer surface than one that had a good canopy cover. Yeah, fair point, fair point. I mean, <clears throat> we found that uh, during the World Cup that we could, uh, you know, just by pokoring, for example, we could take, take the pitch down, we could reduce the, 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 using the clay hammer, we could determine exactly what level of hardness we wanted. It made it actually quite a useful management tool for us because over that prolonged sort of four or five week period, we had opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, people wanting to dance, launching products as well as games. So we found the hybrid was really useful in just being able to adjust to what we, were, what we required for each game. Um, <clears throat> and certainly we've just finished a, a project in Argentina, the River Plate Stadium. And it was interesting, I was down there five weeks ago. It's the first hybrid pitch in, uh, in South America, sorry, in Argentina. And uh, you know, the reaction from the players was, wow, this ball, this ball really moves fast uh, as part of the construction. But it's also that hybrid just giving that zip on the ball. So 
if um, we come into, well, again, back on, 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 on maintenance, because your pitch is performing and playing well, thankfully, however, a little bit to do with it, do you get much more demands from the various teams to use your stadium as a training pitch? Um, they're pretty good. Uh, but an example, a good example this year is, again, my team would usually go down to California or Florida uh, for preseason uh, through travel restrictions. Obviously, they can't do that right now. Um, so they came to me mid-January, end of January, and they said, we need a natural grass field as soon as you can get it. At that point, there was probably two feet of snow outside, and it was minus 10, minus 15 Celsius, something like that. Um, so we slowly cranked the heat up. I, I knew the practice facility didn't have a hope in hell to open itself because it doesn't have the heating systems. It doesn't have the aid of certain things. Um, so we were able to get the stadium open and earlier than we'd ever done. Uh, and when we, in, in years past, when we'd opened it in February, the field always blew apart. Uh, this year they went out earlier than ever. And I was lucky that it all held together and it was, it was very firm. Um, so it's nice as a groundskeeper to be able to give them options, knowing that my field can hold up to what I'm asking it to do. Um, and it is only 5% artificial, but that 5% is a big 5%. And when I tell people, people gawk, gawk at the, the 5% and I say, well, if I tied, if I took all the fibers apart and tied them all end to end, it goes around the earth once. And then they go, whoa, that's a lot of plastic. And it's like, yeah, 5% is a lot of plastic. Um, so it, it definitely increased the play and the usage at the stadium, but that's the return on investment. That's how I sold it to the ownership. Uh, let's spend a little money on us and you can create more money. Yeah, that's similarly to what we do when we're with clients, be it stadiums or training centers, particularly training centers where space is limited. Uh, you have in the central London or you're in the central Paris, it's pretty difficult to have you know, eight, nine training fields. So by having a hybrid system in there, we're able to increase the number of hours up to three times subject to the weather uh, and that just makes it a great management tool uh, for clubs both amateur clubs and professional clubs and particularly in, in the uk uh, councils are starting to look at it because um, <clears throat> people ultimately uh, really like this grass surface to play on and uh, and, and it works well just can you just wrap up a little bit for me on the maintenance side? If you were to sort of give us two or three really key tips on a hybrid surface, what, what, what would be the top sort of three things that you you would say, yeah, this is what you've got to do. If you don't, you're going to have a problem. Uh, the renovation process obviously needs to happen once a year when you can make it happen once a year. Uh, like you said, there are people that do two years, three years. Uh, maybe even four years. There's people that prolong that, but as the organic matter builds up, you're going to start losing your fibers in the ground. Good uh, agree. And then, the, so again, it, it's verticutting, it's controlling your organic matter. It's after a game, even though your field's beaten up, you still go out and you rake it and you beat it up some more just to remove more um, because it's amazing how quickly it can outgrow itself almost. And as soon as those fibers go underground, they're gone. And then you're only... Your only hope is a full renovation. Um, so I think the the unirake, like a, a good spring tie in rake, uh, is a key to the to your uh, arsenal of equipment. Um, the phrase mower, obviously, and then and a, a good aggressive uh, verticutter. Um, another point about the maintenance is your top dressing virtually does disappear um, at that point. Uh, I think it's 75 tons of sand and you've buried your system. So it's about making sure that you got, I was left with 20 mils or, or just under an inch of fiber above the ground. It's making sure those fibers are standing upright and it's making sure the length of the fibers is maintained basically. Okay, well, those are the, <clears throat> the tips from the master. So thank you. Thanks for that, Robert. Um, we're now coming towards the end of this uh, webinar on, on hybrid systems. And I suppose just a couple of comments on in terms of replacing them. Um, the textile, the carpet back systems are uh, fairly easy to replace, but nowadays with environmental concerns, you've, you've got to be able to dispose of that carpet responsibly. 
Uh, the injected systems are actually now easier to remove because we can use a machine called a Coro, which you may not be familiar with. I think there's only a few in North America. They're uh, all around, uh, certainly Europe and, and Asia. The Coro machine can actually remove uh, the fibers uh, while still leaving the roots on intact, which was not the case five, six, seven years ago. I can remember taking uh, the Deso system out of uh, the Bernabeu Stadium and having to put a a sieve on the center of the pitch and dig out all the root zone and sieve the fibers. And so that's, um, that, that was a hell of a lot of hard work. Now it's, uh, it can be done by, by one machine. But these, these systems, uh, very simply the carpet system, there are warranties that I have seen of eight years, 10, 12 years. Uh, personally, on my own experience, I have not seen that happen. Uh, on the stitch systems, I have seen them comfortably go eight, ten, and past that. Uh, but certainly, eight and ten years are, are not an issue with a stitch system. So, um, <clears throat> just to talk a little bit about the North American market, obviously, there had been a few uh, stitch systems installed. I think ten, twelve years ago. I know certainly one. Uh, I think Deso installed one at um, uh, at uh, Green Bay Packers. We, uh, to date, have installed at the Lambeau Field Stadium, which was a real honor to get into uh, an American football stadium. Um, I'm somebody who lived uh, for five years in the US, in New Jersey and Kansas. Uh, so for my sins, I'm a Kansas City, uh, uh, so I should say Kansas Chiefs, a Chiefs fan. Um, so a little bit of disappointment uh, this year. But uh, Green Bay uh, is, is, we've just done their, uh, their training pitch and um, we are currently stitching as of this week at the San Jose Timberwolves Stadium. That's being done as we speak. We intend to come to North America in the fall to demonstrate uh, our hybrid technologies. Uh, so we certainly would like to get into the New England area and run some trials. In the background, you can see a small machine. This is our universal machine. It's 100% electric. And this allows us to, um, to stitch small areas, goalkeeper areas, sidelines, uh, things like lacrosse uh, areas or, or cricket areas. And uh, we will be <clears throat> bringing this machine with us um, to uh, North America, in particular, uh, hopefully the New England region in the fall and we would be delighted to talk to everybody we uh, we're going to put some trials on and we will take questions now that from our side uh finishes our discussion on the on the uh, hybrid grass i hope you've learned something um and thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to all of you uh robert in particular thank you for taking the time i know you're extremely busy uh, we're really grateful that you took the time to partake with us. And if there are any questions uh, after this webinar, both myself and Robert uh, would be happy to, to answer those questions for you. But uh, on this point, we will uh, wrap up. Thank you very much. Thank you, George and Robert, for a fantastic and informative presentation. We appreciate you sharing your knowledge and expertise with all of us. Thank you again to our sponsors, Hearts Turf Pro, Breed Custom Soils, Specialized Turf Services, and Sports CE. We greatly appreciate your involvement and your support. With that, we'll end the webinar. Take good care, everyone, and we'll see you next time.